A lawsuit sheds more light on the failure of Aerofrain, the company that left many of its employees without jobs and no pay. Plus, your chance to let transportation officials know your thoughts on proposed improvements to Highway 378 and a Louisiana Gator shattering all the records this hunting season. Live at 5 is next. And they did that um, using confidential information, again, that they obtained. Now, in High Definition, sponsored by Nissan of Lake Charles. This is 7 News, live at 5. Hello there, I'm Charlie Haldeman, and for Cynthia this afternoon, we're learning new details today about what led to the closure of Aeroframe at Chenault International Airport. Former employees still have not been paid, so now the first employee lawsuits have been filed against the company. The suits claim Aviation Technical Services, that's an airplane maintenance company based in Washington State, intentionally used confidential information to disrupt a deal between Aeroframe and AAR. After the Washington company was not able to reach a deal with Aeroframe, the plaintiffs claimed those actions were done in retaliation, and it caused Aeroframe to close immediately and unexpectedly. And they did that um, using confidential information, again, that they obtained um, during their due diligence with Aeroframe, and they did that. We believe, under the Louisiana Unfair Trade Practices Act, that that's an unfair method of competition. And because they weren't able to come to a deal, they tried to do something to disrupt another deal that would have been beneficial to a lot of people, employees, vendors, Chenault. Um, and so we're, we've also copied the Attorney General in the lawsuit, as you're required to do under the Unfair Trade Practices Act. Twelve employees are suing. Lawsuits were filed in both Cameron and Calcasieu parishes. KPLC's Jaron Jordan will have a complete detailing of what the lawsuit filings mean coming up tonight on 7 News at 6. Two new federal grants will provide improvements to southwest Louisiana airports. Congressman Charles Bustani's office today announcing a $2 million transportation grant that will provide runway improvements and a wildlife hazard assessment. The other grant of more than $78,000 will benefit the Jeff Davis Airport Commission and Jennings. The money will provide for a plan to identify the airport's future capital needs. An important public meeting set for tomorrow for that proposed expansion of State Highway 378. State transportation officials are looking at a feasibility study for improving a stretch of 378 between Moss Bluff and Westlake. Some people are concerned, though, that one of the three proposals DOTD is studying could impact Sam Houston Jones State Park. DOTD encouraging the public to attend that meeting. That will be at the Madigan Center in Westlake tomorrow from 6 until 8. The Beauregard Parish Police Jury has bought the historic First Baptist Church in DeRitter. The parish closed on the sale this afternoon. The Beauregard court system will move onto the property while the old courthouse is renovated. Parish officials say 
The property was bought through the parish's general fund. Tomorrow, the deadline to register to vote in the October 19th election. To register, officials say bring your proof of ID, age, residency to your local registrar of voters office. They're open from 8.30 until 4.30. Allen, Beauregard, and Jeff Davis parishes all have issues to decide, but there are no October elections in Cameron or Calcasieu parishes. The Calcasieu Parish School Board receiving an important lesson in new state education standards today. The school board workshop focused on the common core standards being adopted statewide. The ultimate goal of the program for educators to provide a pathway to college and career readiness for all students. I think board members always have so many things on their plate that they have to deal with mm -hmm. from financial to curriculum and instruction and that's the part that I'm here to talk about is the curriculum and instruction part in relation to the biggest change that's going on in this country right now is uh, Common Core. Louisiana is among at least 46 states that have adopted all or part of the Common Core curriculum standards. Well, we have to endure a couple of hot days ahead, but now a burn ban has been issued for some areas in the state. Let's get a first look at the weather with Wade. Yeah, Charlie, and it's because of the lack there of rainfall that we've dealt with here in southwest Louisiana. And I don't see the change, trend changing much over the next couple of days, but later this week, we're going to get some much needed rain. So maybe these burn bans will be fairly short lived. Here's a look at the radar right now, not showing much going on in southwest Louisiana. There are a couple of very isolated showers, but they are not going to amount to much. It might rain for a couple of minutes as these are working off in a westerly direction. You can see a little bit of rain near the Carlos area, so that might get over to Highway 27 within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, temperatures are warm, lower 90s across most of the area. But as I said, rain chances will be increasing dramatically later this week. More on that in the seven day coming up in a few minutes, Charlie. Busy weather week. Thank you, Wade. A federal judge today ordering a new trial for five former New Orleans police officers convicted of shooting unarmed civilians in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. In 2011, they were convicted of 25 counts of civil rights violations and sentenced to prison terms ranging from six to 65 years. But now, a judge says Justice Department officials tainted the trial by posting inflammatory comments about the case online under pseudonyms. Two people were killed, four seriously wounded when the NOPD officers opened fire on them in the chaotic days following Katrina. Shreveport police are searching for a gunman after a little girl was shot while sleeping in her own bed. Police say the bullet hit the eight-year-old girl in the leg just before midnight. She is at the hospital recovering, and she's going to be okay. Right now, though, police have no suspects. The day after, 34-year-old Aaron Alexis killed 12 people in a shooting at Washington's Navy Yard. The search for answers continues. Authorities say the former Navy reservist had previous run-ins with police in Seattle and Fort Worth. His father says Alexis suffered from PTSD after being in New York on 9-11. Most recently, he sought help from the VA after having problems sleeping and hearing voices. The FBI is trying to piece together a possible motive for the killings. We continue to conduct interviews, exploit digital media, and run down every lead we can to piece together his recent movements. It really is hard to believe that someone with a record as checkered uh, as this man could conceivably get, you know, clearance. Officials have also released the five remaining names of the civilian employees killed yesterday. All 12 victims were between the ages of 46 and 73. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel joined others at the U.S. Navy Memorial for a wreath laying in memory of the victims. Now to a follow-up on that rare amoeba linked to tap water in St. Bernard Parish outside New Orleans. Health officials have pinpointed some of the locations where the amoeba was found. And while officials say the water is safe to drink, the people who live there are understandably concerned about the risks. Travers Mackel has the report. In the violet area of St. Bernard Parish, Robert Robinson is busy watering his lawn and plants. His wife, Yvonne, well aware that just last night it was confirmed by health officials the presence of a rare brain-eating amoeba at four locations in St. Bernard Parish including one near them in Violet. It could be on this street, I don't know. Parish President Dave Peralta confirms that a fire hydrant near the Robinson's home is one of the four hotspots identified in Violet and Araby 
by the Department of Health and Hospitals. Last month, Peralta says the parish started flushing its water supply with extra levels of chlorine after a four-year-old Mississippi boy who was visiting St. Bernard Parish died after he contracted encephalitis from the brain eating amoeba. Chlorine in the system kills the amoeba. Peralta says despite the positive test, water is safe to drink. Do I believe it to be fully into the system all over the parish? No, sir, I do not. Uh, but the parish president is well aware that some people are scared. There's some concerns. There's, there's some obvious concerns, uh, and, I, and I totally and completely understand it. I have those concerns. This is my responsibility. Health officials say there's a very low risk of contracting any disease since people cannot be infected by just drinking the water. The amoeba can only affect the person if it gets into their nose. Nonetheless, the Robinsons say they'll take precautions. It's a concern because, you know, he say one thing and then look again, is that is, is here in the uh, inviolate area. State health officials, uh, state health department officials say it may take several weeks to finish decontaminating and flushing the St. Bernard Parish water system. Well, now might be the perfect time to clean your home's air conditioning system, and it could save you money. We have advice from Angie's List in our 7 on Your Side report coming up next. says he suffered from a nagging dry cough after some drywall work created a lot.